This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be up in Cary, Ohio at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo. Who doesn't love some barbecue and bingo? This Thursday again, 4 to 7 in Cary, Ohio. They will also be up in Upper Sandusky this Halloween from noon to 4 at the Fall Craft Show at the Wyandotte County Fairgrounds. Be sure to head up the Mad Canadian social media sites, Facebook and Twitter, for more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? That's how you do it, Kyle. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, wrist order, veteran-owned coffee company. Um, they're a world-class hand roaster. All of their coffee is fresh, roast to order. Uh, it's roasted right here in Ohio, more specifically Toledo, more specifically yet in Perrysburg. Uh, all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, integrity is the core value of what they do. Uh, they import all of their high-quality coffee beans directly from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far-off lands. Uh, it's time to start thinking about Christmas, and it's time to start thinking about holiday shopping and all of that. So uh, if you want to get someone a gift card, you can. If you want to get someone a sampler so they can find their favorite coffee for themselves, uh, you can also do that by going to, uh, they have the uh, package, the, the whole shebang. I couldn't think of it. Uh, you can buy the whole shebang sampler, uh, which will buy uh, your gift recipient one of each of their unflavored coffees. So uh, you can do that and maybe buy yourself something while you're at it over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's everybody doing today? I'm not gonna lie, I lost my breath a little bit on that ad read. <laughs> a team chaos took some souls this this weekend, Jared. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And we will could, we will could, get could have there. taken more. Could have taken more. Also, may have taken less, depending upon if we want to. Yeah. Listen, I counted NC State. Yeah. Should we have? Uh, I don't know. But I did. We'll, 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 we'll get into it here, Jared. So let's start the show. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right here. How are you doing today's Jared? Doing today's Jared? Doing today's Jared. Yes. Doings, doings, today's is Jared's. Schmeagle. <laughs> All right. We got uh, our collegiate chaos. I got it right this time. We're doing our collegiate chaos episode. There you go. So we're going we're gonna to do things a little bit different today. Um, Jared has wiped the board clean. I have. He's wiped the board clean here. And we're going to go ahead and pull up the board here, and we are going to get into our rankings. Yeah, so let, so, me, let me do the things. So, uh, as, yep, as Jared's doing that here. So going to going to classify our rankings here. We're only going to do C, B, A, and S tiers. Maybe maybe a few, not as many C, Cs, but mainly S, A, and B tiers. S tier, we think that they have a legitimate shot that making the playoffs a no. a t sorry uh s tier is our top four teams those are okay. the teams in the playoffs right now per our opinion okay a uh, the a tier a tier is they have a legitimate has a good shot of making the playoffs b tier has a good chance of winning their division and making their conference championship. I'm calling, I think we're calling it like a, a, a far outside shot at the playoffs. Okay. And then the C is uh, C. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's a All good right. team that just doesn't have a shot at this point. All right. Um, since we are an Ohio state podcast, we are going to talk about the big 10. So let's start, let's talk 
some Big Ten football to start the sh- to start the show here. And what better way than the Penn State Illinois game? Good going God, in, <laughs> going into nine overtimes, Illinois winning twenty to eighteen. Leave it like to new, the, leave it to the Big Ten to have a nine overtime game that still goes under. <laughs> yes. I think the over under was 43 or 44. Yeah. It, it had to go I into tw- had to go into 20 overtimes to get that. <laughs> or you know, score some points in regulation. Uh yeah, uh not not a great showing. Um Kyle, this is Penn State's second loss. Uh Team Chaos uh has feasted. Um so they're not an A tier they're not an S tier. They would need a, a a ton of help to get into the playoff, or are they out of the playoffs? Period. At this point, I think I think I think you put them at the very end of the B tier. They're like they're like on one foot hanging off the edge on B right now. Stick them right there on uh, that. What that that's about that's about uh, Cedar Point, right? Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, let's see. Wisconsin taking care of business over Purdue. Purdue was ranked. I think they were 25th, but Wisconsin wins 30 to 13. Do we care of putting any of these teams on the board here, Jared? No. Okay. None of these teams are going to the playoffs. All right. North Michigan beats Northwestern 33 to seven. I think that, I think that was a cover by Michigan here, but Michigan, it Just was doing do, do, doing what they need to do here to win games. They're undefeated here, going into got their big matchup here against um, a little brother, big brother. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> um, both both undefeated teams this next weekend here. So, as much as people would want us to put it way down into the M tier, yeah, I, I, I think I think Michigan right now is an A tier team right now. Yeah, absolutely. They. You know, I, I'm not putting them in my top four by any means, so they're not going in the S tier, but uh, they control their own destiny into the playoffs. You know, if they beat Ohio State and they if they go undefeated, win the division, win the conference, they're in the playoffs. So they control their yeah, absolutely. A, I agree with you, Hoosier Buck. It's not it's it's not going to happen. Okay. Um, I did not. Uh, they, they still I, control their own destiny. Iowa did not play, Jared. Where would you like to put Iowa? They had a bye week this week. Uh, they're still a one loss team. They're still in control, I, I think, uh, of their of their fate. I think if they win the Big Ten, they have a legitimate shot at making the playoff. I, I still say they're an A tier team. Okay. I, I think I think I put them at the bottom of A tier, but yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, they, yeah, they wouldn't. They're not at the top of A tier. They're not at the top. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then talked about the Ohio State game in our previous episode. S tier, the way that they've been playing right now, they're, offensively, the best offense in the country right now. Defense is getting better right now. Definitely one of the top four teams in the country right now. Not yet. Number one offense and a respectable defense. Yep. I've seen teams win the national title with worse than that. Mm -hmm. They're they're in the top Uh, four, no doubt. Yep. And then Sparty, who also had a bye week, uh, currently ranked eighth. So going up against, again, little brother, big brother, depending on who you're asking. uh, I agree, Buckeye Zach. I I think LSU in 2019 is a good comp for Ohio State right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I I put Sparty lower a tier as well they control their own destiny right now undefeated i we'll we'll find out we'll find out really who this sparty team is this weekend i mean both jared and i have um expressed our opinions on sparty um in previous you mean that they're fake good yeah but it's it's (laughs) put up or shut up this weekend for sparty and michigan we'll find out who these teams are this after this weekend here yeah, they're uh, they're renting space in A tier. Yep. All right, I think that's all the Big Ten teams here, Jared. I think uh, that's all that we care about 
talking about. I, I think as far as relevant Big Ten teams, that would be that would be it. it playoff relevant Big Team Big Ten teams. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. All right, moving on to top twenty five matchups from the weekend here. Pulling up my notes here. I'll drop Coastal a team Ca- chaos regardless, Buckeye Coast- Zach. Coastal- it's it's a Coastal top ten Car- loss. Yep. Coastal Carolina loses to Appy State 30 to 27. I think that was Thursday. I think that was a Thursday game. Friday Wednesday. Game? I forget. Wednesday. Wednesday game, man. Do you do you care? Um I think you put Coastal Carolina as a C tier right now. I don't think I, that yeah. pretty much put them out of the playoffs right now. So you, you have first, to go undefeated. Their, 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 first coastal- loss, their first loss of the season still. But if you, if you play Coastal Carolina's schedule, you have to go undefeated. And yes, they didn't. Yep. All right. Um, SMU. SMU took care of business over Tulane. Where would you like to put SMU at? I'm putting them down in C tier as well. They're undefeated, which is nice. I just, I don't, I don't see the playoff taking them seriously. Um, mm-hmm. They are undefeated. Think... Just they are undefeated, just like the Bearcats. Yeah, but they didn't beat Notre Dame or Indiana. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. And I they agree. don't recruit like Cincinnati recruits. Mm-hmm. And they didn't get an invite to the Big Twelve for next year. Yep, Oklahoma, I can keep going. Jared. Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma, it a lot closer game than the final score. Oklahoma scored a touchdown right at the end there to to win thirty five to twenty three. Much closer than that was. N- another week goes by, and Oklahoma just just Scraping. somehow getting a win. Just somehow getting a win here. They they I, have I, a very bad habit of playing down to their competition. Yeah, but they keep like what um, Zach just said down in the chat there. They keep winning. Yeah. But and they're I, in the, put, I, put, I put them in the A tier. I would yeah. put them in the A tier. They're I, absolutely in the driver's seat to win their conference. I Who mm-hmm. else wins the conference? Because Oklahoma State got revealed for who they, they... They are who we thought they were. So who else, who else in the Big 12 could even challenge well, they, them well, at this well, point? Well, then uh, you put Oklahoma State down in the B tier then. Right now, that was their first loss, and then Iowa State. You can you can argue that they could be in the B tier as well, but they're B C tier for me. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, I, and I think I think B tier to me is essentially a team with two losses. It's a very good team with two losses. I think is what B tier is to me. Um. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, we've never seen, and this year has been so chaotic so early that if, if it were going to happen, this year might be the year for it to happen. But we've yep. never seen a two-loss team get a playoff berth. Nope. And yeah. Oh, you to the B tier. No, no. No, no. Now, here's an undefeated team that you can possibly talk about B, a B tier here. Wake Forest. Week for us, this game against Army, 70 to 56. <laughs> 70 to 56. The I had under the over under Jared was 54 and the losing team was over the over under. Yeah, um, that, that was one of the dumbest games. I, and I didn't watch it, watch it. I had it on my laptop in the court, like in the corner of my eye. And every time I, every time I looked over Wake Forest had a guy just running by himself for a long touchdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that's uh, where would you put Wake Forest? What you, yeah, Wake Forest here. This is Wake Forest. It's just so weird. They're, they're an undefeated, like they're an undefeated ACC team, but they keep winning. Their quarterback's playing very well here. Yeah. I, I, I'd say a solid B right now if they if they keep yeah. winning they, they definitely could have a shot there at the a tier if and if things get chaotic worse in the playoffs <laughs> i have a such a hard time seeing it like in all with with everything we've said to be fair and to, and to be consistent we should almost be putting them in a tier they're a team that c- can easily win their conference title 
And everything we're saying about now, we could be saying about Pitt as well. So you might as well include Pitt into this conversation. They're, mm -hmm. they're teams with very good quarterbacks who are playing very well. Um, they're teams with one loss. They're teams that control their fate within their conference. They're on opposite sides of their of their conference. So they'll, they'll in theory, end up playing each other because who had that one on the bingo card? Wake Forest well, versus Pitt um, for the ACC title. Well, I'm, lo I'm looking at Wake Forest's remaining schedule. It's not an easy road for them. Uh, North Carolina, NC State, Boston College, and Clemson left on their schedule. Am I supposed to be afraid of any of those teams no, based off of no, what I've seen? I, I'm, I'm not saying that you should be afraid, but it's it's a lot. It's harder than their first part, which they played Old Dominion, Norfolk State, Florida State, Louisville, Syracuse. It, it's de it's definitely tougher than their <laughs> than their first half. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, again, we're, when we're talking about Wake Forest and Pitt, we're talking about the same team in many ways. I just, I don't see either of those teams being talented enough to hang with the teams that we're putting in S and A tier. I think mm -hmm. they're teams that are taking advantage of a, and of course, Wake Forest is undefeated and Pitt has one loss and, that that needs to be said. And, and who, who did Pitt lose to as well? Western Michigan. Directional Michigan team. Yes. I I, I don't understand how. All right. All right. Cincinnati. Cincinnati we, should, we really a... probably should have Wake Forest and A, even though they don't. No. I really don't feel like not, they're talented not enough to. Not yet. Not yet. Not for yeah. me. No. On Cincinnati, paper, they should be. Cincinnati had a scare with Navy. Here's, here's another armed forces team that put Guys, up a scare again. Never. Cincinnati. I put them. I would put them in the. I'd put them in the S tier right, right now. We're going S. I'd put, I'd put Cincinnati in the S tier. All right. Let, let's put them up there for now. Remember, we, we're only allowed to put four teams in S tier. So we're going to put them up there for, <laughs> for now. And we, Kyle, should we put Oklahoma in S tier? Mm -hmm. No, no. Because there's. Let's, let's put them up there for now. Okay. All right. All right, we might now. we might move them back down. All right, all right, moving on here. Let's see. Talk about that. All right, Oregon. Keep, keep in mind, Gangland. We're working off of a new chart. We're we're putting four teams. We are putting four teams. No matter what, we are putting four teams in S tier. Yeah. All right. Um. Next game here. Oregon escapes with the win against UCLA. I thought UCLA had a chance right at the end there, but Oregon escapes with the win here, thirty-four to thirty-one. This Oregon team is is just I have a hard time really pinpointing who this Oregon team is. Like, are they this team that that beat Ohio State, or are they or are they this team who lost to Stanford? They lost to Ohio State when Ohio State couldn't defend a pass against the a quality high school team. By the way, Ohio State has not let up a rushing touchdown since Oregon. I'm going to go ahead and toss that little factoid out there. Uh, I, I mean, I think they're an A tier team uh, is where I'm putting them right now. I think they could get into the playoffs. I don't think that they control their own destiny into the playoffs, but I think they can easily get to the playoffs. I think A tier is where yep. they belong. Okay. Yep. I agree. Ole Miss um, beats LSU 31 to 17. Here's Ole Miss now ranked in the top ten now. Yep. What do you make? What do you make of this Ole Miss team? Their 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 only loss was to Alabama here, and I I think they they yeah I th I think they they're a solid team here, but they they need they need a lot of help to to get into the SEC championship here. I they're lacking on the defensive side they have a really nice quarterback and um i just i just don't see the talent in all honesty um they have a really nice quarterback and lane kiffin gets that school a bunch of attention so that's helpful um and, Matt, and then but and, I, and, I just and, don't and, see them as like a top to bottom talented enough team to put them in the same conversation as 
Yeah. I'm, to, I'm fine to, me, put... to me, they're the Michigan State of the SEC right now. Mm. They're in the I'm top fine. 10 due to a lack of better options. Yeah, I'm fine putting them in the B tier here. This is I a team that had... This, this, this is... Well, okay, well, no, you're right. You're right. This, no, is, no, this you're is a right. team who won by one to Arkansas, team by one by five to Tennessee here, and one by 10 against Louisville, a, a, a pretty bad Louisville team as well. I, I, I think, I think B is right where they should be right now. Probably. Um, now, now, now it could change here. They do have some interesting games coming up here. Auburn, Texas, and up. So yeah, they, they could possibly move up to the A tier in our list here, but I, I think B is where they should be. Uh, Buckeye Zach says B is fair, but C is truth. And, and I think mm. that's about what this is. Um, I, I, they're they're a second loss away from moving down to the C tier, which is I think where they probably belong. Um, yep. All right, Jared. I think I think this is a good place right here to pause and take a quick ad break. All right, uh, Kyle. Tonight's episode is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based company. Uh, yada yada yada. We are we we did all that right. Um, where they're fresh roasted, veteran-owned, marine-owned, Ohio-based, all that. Let's talk about a coffee or two. Um, over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company, they have some of. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this over Kyle and I's face here. Kyle, if you need to pick your nose, now would be a good time. I threw the Iron Bean over your face. Um, let's let's take a look at their new flavored coffees. Uh, you, Unicorn's not new, but it's always worth talking about. It's their R&D coffee. You never know exactly what it's going to be. Uh, that's what that's what makes it fun. It's it's uh, I feel like uh, Starburst used to have those mystery ones every once in a while. It's that uh, you have the salted caramel mocha. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the vanilla hazelnut also pretty explanatory. Uh, guys, the cinnamon roll sold out. The cinnamon roll has sold out. Um, if you want to uh, get one of these new flavored coffees, you might want to hurry. Uh, cause as is the bananas foster also sold out, uh, the peanut butter chocolate. Uh, I've not had this one yet myself, but I have heard from several people in the discord that it's not, it's not like that artificial f peanut buttery flavor that sometimes artificial peanut butter. Has. It's, it's not that it's very good. Um, yeah, Gangland swears by it. Nomad swears by it. I've heard from several people who are like, no, no, no. Uh, I know what you're talking about when you're talking about that fake peanut butter and chocolate taste. It's not that. It's genuine. It's good. And honestly, I expect nothing less from Iron Bean. Uh, you have the butter pecan, and then you have some of the uh, the older, more uh, mainstay of the uh, flavored coffees. Uh, Mom's carrot cake currently sold out. The white chocolate peppermint currently sold out. Uh, but still available, the Dylan's Grog, the Intense Blueberry, and the Mint Chocolate Chip. All of these flavored coffees available to you, as well as a long, long list of uh, standard coffees, of not flavored coffees, over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, mentioned at the top of the show where you can find the Mad Canadian uh, this Thursday and Sunday. Let me let me read a few reviews from actual uh, customers that ha that partake partook partake in in some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian. Here's one. Here's one that says, um, "There we go." It said, "My wife and I um, had Mad Canadian here, and and they were the best ribs I've ever had." Um, um, awesome products and can't can't wait to get my hand get can't wait to get my hands on some more. Here's another um, lady who said that she lives in Arizona but had um, had great experience and is awesome. I um, mean, here's one guy that I love this I love this review. Food ten out of ten. Beard ten out of ten. Mad ten out of ten. Canadian TBD. <laughs> that one's fair. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, check out the Mad Canadian again this Thursday in Cary, this Sunday up in, um, what did I say? Upper San? No, it wasn't Upper Sandusky. Yes, it was Upper Sandusky, the Wyandot County Fairgrounds this Sunday from noon to four. Check out the Mad Canadian social media to find out more information about him 
and his food truck, Mad Candy Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, before, uh, before we get too much further in the uh, games, we're talking about some of the games, we're talking about where we're ranking these teams. Uh, who else was on a bye week this this past week? Uh, Georgia did not play, correct? Georgia did not play. I would put Georgia S -tier. in the S tier. If you don't Absolutely. put Georgia in the uh, if any list that doesn't put Georgia in the S tier, you're you're doing yeah. it wrong. They're basically the you not the uh, I almost said I almost said anonymous unanimous uh, number one team in the country right now. Um, I, I I'd love to see Ohio State play them. I'm not afraid of them. I'll say I'll say that. I, I I would love to see the Ohio State's number one offense versus their number one defense. I'm not afraid of them. I think Ohio State can can go toe to toe. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'd like to see. I, it. I agree. So I'm just looking down here, looking at this list. Um, uh, Kentucky. I don't think Kentucky played. No, Kentucky did not play. They okay. are currently ranked twelfth. They're currently ranked twelfth. They have one loss. Uh, yep. they're, they're in the SEC East, which does give them an easier path than Ole Miss in the SEC. No, it doesn't because no, of, they, they lost because to of Georgia because they, they lost, lost to Georgia. To Georgia. Um, I'm going to say C tier, uh, yep. only because they lost, I mean, they lost to Georgia and I, I don't see them getting in the SEC championship game. Mm -hmm. I don't see Georgia dropping two games. All right. I just don't um, see it. It's also not playing was Baylor. Baylor is 16th with one loss as well. I, yeah. I'd, probably put, I'd probably put Baylor currently. I'd put Baylor in the. I mean, it, it, one loss in the big 12. I'd say C right now, but man, they, they can, they can make that up. They can be up in the B tier quickly. They play Texas and Oklahoma here in the next few weeks. The difference to me between Kentucky with one loss and Baylor with one loss is that Baylor still gets to play Oklahoma and Kentucky already lost to the team they need to beat in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, it's not even me saying Baylor's a better team than Kentucky because I don't think that's true. Uh, this is about, to me, a team's playoff ability to make the playoffs. And yeah. Kentucky lost to the team they need to beat, and Baylor just hasn't yet. They haven't had that opportunity yet to win or lose against that team that they need to beat. Yep. Um, I put the same belt um, with Auburn. Uh, Auburn, I put in the C tier as well. Uh, let's see. San Diego State won. I, I put that, I probably put them in the. San Diego State's undefeated here, but I don't think they I don't think they're gonna get a shot just because of their schedule here. I'd I'd probably put San Diego State in the C tier as well. Yeah, I mean they're only even on the chart because they're currently undefeated. And yep. it's not like it's not like they've played anyone, but I, I put them on the chart because they're undefeated. Mm -hmm. Um let's see. Harvard and Yale gangland are not FBS. <laughs> yeah would be my answer right. to that all right let, let's let's get back to the games that happened here um alabama beats tennessee 52 to 24 it was definitely a lot closer early on here jared this, no, this alabama couldn't. team this, this this alabama team it like it was close. Like, not... It was a cl it was it was a close game going into that fourth quarter, and then, like I don't think the final score really told how this how this game really ended up here. But I I'd still I still I I can't blame you if you put Alabama still in the S tier, just because of just because of the playmakers that they have the the. Defense is doing their thing, but if you move them to the S tier, Jared, who who would you move? Who would you move down then? That's the thing. I don't want to. I mean, they're they're an A tier team. Absolutely, they're incredibly flawed. I think 
Uh, their offense is not efficient. It's not smooth right now. Their defense is vulnerable. Um, it doesn't look like Alabama right now. It just doesn't look like Alabama. As Kyle said, that game was... Um, that game was way, way closer for way, way longer against the Tennessee team that's not, I promise you, not very good. It's not a very good Tennessee team. Uh, they they let Tennessee, they were losing to Tennessee 14-7 to at the end of the first quarter. It's, and then it was it was it was twenty one to fourteen at halftime. Yeah, so I mean, they're I'm still gonna they're I'm not I'm not putting them in the S tier right now. They'll have their opportunity. They control their own destiny. If Bama wins out, including beating Georgia in the SEC title game, they'll get their playoff spot. They control yep. their own destiny. Bama fans don't need to worry about the external shit right now. It doesn't matter. They need to worry about their own internal shit right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Gangland says, I think they look like the, a run of the mill SEC team. I don't think they could beat Georgia. I completely agree. He says they can't handle blitzes. I completely agree. Uh, Buckeye Zach asks Tennessee versus IU in a bowl. If it, uh, if it, you know, who would win Tennessee versus Indiana? Um, I, I'd say Tennessee, honestly. Probably, Indiana, Indiana has, 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 they don't have a quarterback right now, and that's what's hurting them. I, I you probably have, you'll probably take Tennessee right now. It just kind of depends upon if Penix is standing, and I say that because if Penix is standing, then they have a hope. If Penix yep. isn't standing, they don't have a hope against Tennessee. But Ohio State annihilated Indiana, you know, from the first quarter on, whereas Alabama needed a half to get. Mm-hmm even started in that game yep uh let's see do you want to include north carolina state after they lost to miami is that loss number what for them i think that is loss number two i am trying to pull it up right now that is loss number two for north carolina state yeah um i i I don't even want to if you put if okay all right. If if I would if if I would it would be C tier. I think they're a, an okay team, I, but yeah. I mean the yeah. the the gist of what we're doing right now is I, we don't even necessarily want to mm-hmm. use the yep. the D tiers okay. at the at the moment. Yep. We just kind of want to focus on S A B C. Texas A and Texas A and M um, takes care of business over South Carolina, forty four to fourteen. Uh, we saw Texas A and M being able um, beat. Um, Alabama just a couple weeks ago here, and I don't know. I I don't know where to put them. B tier, C tier. I'm I'm honestly not too sure where where to put. Them. I'm gonna say C tier right now, but they have the chance of going up the board a decent yeah. amount if Bama were to lose again, because then that mm-hmm. puts them in the driver's seat in the SEC West. Yep, they they got a but yep they got yeah, a bye as Gangland week. just asked, could they win the West? Yes, they could. Mm-hmm. As they um they got a bye week this week, but they got they got back to back games against Auburn and Mississippi State here. So yeah, they we'll, we'll see how they do here in the next few weeks. And then the last game here, Jared, we have Notre Dame and USC. Notre Dame wins thirty one to sixteen. And Jared, I didn't watch a single second of this game, so I can't tell you <laughs> I can't tell you anything about this game other than I see the final score. Yeah, it's it's Notre Dame. Um the loss to Cincinnati and you know, it's their only loss. Um which mm-hmm. is kinda unfortunate. I, <laughs> but I probably I probably put Notre Dame in the B tier here. I think so. Uh, I think it's possible, but I think they need a lot of help. But um, they, they don't they don't really play anybody else the rest of this year. North Carolina. They that, they just kind of have that, to survive and hope that chaos happens yep. external to them. The North Carolina game could have been good. Then they play Navy, Virginia, Georgia Tech, and Stanford. Not that great of a um, remaining schedule here. All right, Kyle. Um, I have to I have to ask this question. Before we go too much further, did did we overrate Penn State and Iowa State 
two teams with two losses. Now that we're now that we're like starting to figure out our new ranking system, do you think maybe we overrated Penn State and Iowa State? Um, because they're the only teams with two losses in that B tier right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. We're we're still we're still figuring out our new scale. We're still figuring out the new scale, so we're gonna drop those guys down to C. Okay. And then yeah, Baylor, Baylor, you can keep at the B tier right now. That's that's fine with me. Yeah, and like I said, Baylor has an opportunity to to beat Oklahoma still. I don't think they do. And, but... then, and then you have and then you have two teams here, BYU and UTSA. Uh, I'm including B... UTSA in the chart because they're undefeated, and that's okay. great, and yeah. that's fun. But they're in the C tier. Yep. Now BYU. Two losses, an independent team. Should yep. I even, should we even include them on the chart? Do, do they I, belong I, in the C tier? I, they are currently ranked 25th. Well, again, these rankings don't really matter, but. They don't matter at all. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think they have a shot at all at getting in the playoffs. There's, there's, there's no way. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. Again, to surmise what we're what we're doing with the new chart here, currently in the playoff, a very good chance to get into the playoff. An okay chance of getting into the playoff. C tier is like one percent, like on life support, or if enough crazy shit happens around them, is sort of where where C tier is. Not one hundred percent dead yet. Yeah. Although, like, maybe 99% dead. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'm asking Kyle. I'm asking the chat. Should someone be in the chart who's not in? Like, is there anyone in college football who you think even has a remote 0.5% chance of getting into the playoffs who we do not currently have on the chart? And also, how are we feeling about the S tier? I'm fine with the S tier right now. I know there's a lot of people, both sides. You can argue with Cincinnati, like, yeah, like you, you have people like under they're undefeated. They have wins against Indiana and Notre Dame, um, and then you have the other side is like uh, the other side of well, if they played Georgia or Alabama, who do you Ohio replace State them right with? Now, they, they, they would get they would get destroyed right now, but. Gangland, but, new, but, but for, new chart but fortunate rules, four for, teams go in S tier. Cincinnati, though, is that they don't have to play those teams in the regular season. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it, to me, as I see things right now, I kind of see Ohio State, if we were doing a hyper-detailed tier list, I kind of see Georgia on their own right now, and I see Ohio State on their own in that second tier and then there's a third tier that would have like Oklahoma and Cincinnati, probably and Alabama, Bama. And maybe that's it. Maybe throw Oregon on that chart. Maybe throw Michigan on that, on that tier. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yep. All right. Let's get yeah, to some hold, questions Hold on. Gang, Gangland said what yep. I was trying to say better. Um, you should separate them at the opposite end. Um, let's see. Uh, Georgia, little gap to OSU. OSU, huge gap to OU. Yeah, I, I, I would say that. Like, Georgia's the S tier. Ohio State's like the SA tier. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to some questions here, Jared. Let's do that. Uh, Let me get a, out just of... A let me let me just get out of few, this mode and you you ask questions. Yep, just a few here. Nomad asks us, does Jimbo take the LSU job? Does Dabo hold out for the Bama job? Uh, hold on. Technical. Kyle is is our Zoom not showing back up in the window? Nope. Technical issues. We have technical issues. Yeah, while, while Jared's trying to do that here, yeah, uh, Dabo, man, look, like what what is going on with Clemson right now? This is their third loss right now, I believe. Um, 
you know, it's their it's their third loss here. There, there's there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about Dabo and like if, is this his last year at Clemson or is he gonna or is he gonna go to a um, a different university next year? I just I don't think I don't think Dabo's going to go anywhere for what he's built in in Clemson right now. But man, let, let's just say hypothet let's just say hypothetically, end of twenty twenty two, Saban Saban um, retires. He says I, I'm done. And let, and let's say Dabo has another two or three loss season next year. Could you see Dabo going to Alabama though? I. I I I wouldn't bet on that, and I wouldn't bet either side of that. Yeah, I was about to say if he has this season and then another three loss season, I don't know if the people at Bama want him. Um, I I don't know. It's I I kind of see Dabo as a lifer at Clemson. That that's just how I see it right now. Okay. Uh, does Jimbo take the LSU job? No, no, hell no. Nope. Why? Uh, why? Why do people think the LSU job's attractive? Yeah, just because it's the SEC, Jared. If it's says Texas A and M. Who's your Buckeye? Yeah, who's your Buckeye Zach? What's the over under on Dabo's termination at the end of the season? Zero. Yeah, no, it's Zero. not happening. Not ha- termination, as in yeah. yeah, no, not happening. No, that would never happen. He, he'll be, he'll he'll leave to go to another to another uh, coaching job. He'll he'll never be terminated unless unless something come unless something comes yeah. up. Con, yeah, yeah. Unless there's a con. Yeah, that that that's different. If they find some <laughs> emails of him using words that begin with N or something along those lines, then maybe. But outside of that, yeah. I'm if for football reasons. For, you will not be fired from Clemson anytime soon for football reasons. Maybe they find emails, <laughs> Zach. Mm-hmm. Maybe they find emails. I don't know. That that I just had to throw that asterisk on there. Yep. All right, Jared. Uh, let's see. Would would Alabama really want Dabo considering he has too many drop offs? Um, Zach asks. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, probably, maybe not. Yeah, maybe, maybe Alabama probably wouldn't if if Dabo has three losses again next year. Let's just say hypothetically. Problem is, is like who replaces Saban? We're talking literally the best college football coach of his generation, if not beyond that. Yep. Sa- Saban, Saban's a one. That's it. Would would Sark go back to Alabama? I, I mean, let's, let's slow down. The guy failed at USC. He is, mm-hmm. you know, he didn't, he didn't have magic pixie dust to, to sprinkle over Texas. They are not back. It's year one. I'm not calling, I'm not saying he's failing at Texas. It's year one. They look fine. Do they look considerably better than, than they did under Tom Herman? considerably better than under Tom Herman? I don't think so. No. All right, Jared, I, I mean, maybe yeah. he does maybe he does good stuff there. I don't know, but <laughs> we that that we don't that's just undecided yet at this point. Mm-hmm. All right, Jared, that is all for today's episode. All right. Uh I want to encourage everyone to uh check out the t-shirt store. Um although I'm not Neither of us are wearing anything you can currently buy in either of our t-shirt stores. <laughs> so we're, we're not being good ambassadors for the brand. Um, but uh, Sloopcast, uh, excuse me, merch.thesloopcast.com to buy some of our podcast merch. Uh, if you want to support us by buying some t-shirts, but don't necessarily want to walk around wearing uh, a shirt that someone says, oh, what's that? And you're like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a podcast I listen to. And then you feel awkward. Uh, you, you can go uh, buy some cool Ohio stuff. Just like some general Ohio stuff uh, over at um, 7071, the numbers, the number 
thesloopcast.com and it's just some cool Ohio merch and you can check out some stuff there. Um, and uh, I'm reason I'm wearing this shirt today, which I think I bought at Target or something. It's it's just a red 36. That's all this is. And uh, if you want to know why I decided to wear my red 36 this week, then go ahead and stick around for Kyle's corner. <laughs> yes, and that would be Ohio State legend Chris Spielman. He has announced himself <laughs> into the Lions <laughs> Ring of Honor. <laughs> that. I understand exactly what you're saying, Kyle, but it doesn't sound good. If people don't, don't understand the context, uh, <laughs> you have to go see the video. If you haven't seen the video, um, the Lions pulled the nicest prank of all time against Chris Spielman, where uh, they were having him do what he thought was probably some sort of standard promotional material because uh, he works for the Lions. Uh, some standard promo material. Uh, and then he goes and he starts reading and uh, he figures out that he's reading himself. He's reading a promo about himself being inducted into the Lions Ring of Honor, which is going to happen uh, this Sunday, uh, which is a week from when we're recording this, but considerably closer. And uh, uh, Gangland says Gerd just posted a six stat. So uh, let's 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 expand Kyle's corner into Kyle and Gerd corner. Right, By I'm the way, to... Kyle's traveling this week, and uh, Tony Gerdeman is uh, confirmed, unless shit changes, because sometimes shit changes. You know, we're all humans with lives and stuff. But uh, as of right now, Tony, Ger Tony Gerdeman confirmed for our Friday episode of Sloop Picks. Nice. Nice. What about Thursday? I haven't figured Thursday out yet. <laughs> all right. All right. So, um... Gerdeman here. See what see, see what has here. What he has here. So, Travion Henderson has eight care eight of his or excuse me twenty one of his Matthew. carries. Twenty one of his carries have been for over ten yards. Eight of those have been for twenty. Six of those for thirty. Four of those for forty, and two of those for fifty yards. That's insane. Hey, Matthew, if you're going to say finally someone who has some sense. And, and I get but you should probably you should probably spell sense correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you're going to take shots. I'm going to take shots back. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. That's that's all. That's all I have. And I will. I'm just having everybody fun with you, Matthew. I'll catch everybody back here next week. And um, I'll, I'll, still, I'll send you my stuff, Jared, so you can. Read that for, for our um, for our picks and all that too. So, hey Matthew, don't worry about it. I, whenever I listen to the show back, I I end up misspeaking like five times an episode. It's all good, man. It's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> all right, Kyle. That's the end of the show. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by uh, Ohio Punk Royalty. Uh, punk band with their roots right here in Columbus, right in Ohio state. Uh, they are called the new bomb Turks. So go ahead. If you're listening to the podcast, stick around, do nothing. You're probably, you might already be hearing it. Uh, and for those of you on YouTube, just uh, go down in the uh, show notes and, and find a link and you can listen to the song there. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the new bomb Turks. 